hello hello welcome to my channel my name is Amelie if you're new here if you're not welcome back and today's video is the long-awaited Q&A so I asked you guys to ask me questions on my Instagram and you guys came through with so many good questions and I'm so excited to answer them but first I just wanted to take a moment to talk to you guys about Casetify so I've actually known about Casetify for a long time, which is why I'm so excited to get the opportunity to work with them. But Casetify is a phone case brand that has tons of designs for phone cases that are also super durable and offer a lot of protection, which is really important to me because I always drop my phone. But their cases are also customizable, which means you can edit them to reflect your personality. So I got mine to say work on you for you, which is one of my personal mottos. And then another thing I love about their cases is that a few of them come with the wireless charging option, but it's actually hidden in the inside so you don't have to see it on the back. So if you guys want to match with me or get 15% off of your purchase, you can use code 15 omelie D at checkout. All right, now that we've talked about that, once again, you guys can use my code 15 omelie D for 15% off your order because not only does it help you guys get 15% off, but it also helps support me. So like I said, today's a Q&A. So I just have all the questions on my computer because I film on my phone and then I also have some water and it's orange because I like mix it with this vitamin thing. So if you're wondering why I'm drinking orange water, that is why. So I figured that I would just start with like kind of some basic get to know me easy questions and then we'll get deeper into like the fitness more, I don't know, scary questions later on. So the first question is what is my favorite food? And my favorite food if ice cream counts, it's definitely ice cream, which may be surprising. Also, it's really bad because I'm actually lactose intolerant, but ice cream is definitely my favorite food. I have a huge sweet tooth, so I always prefer like sweet things over savory. But if you just meant like actual meals, then I would have to say like a really good Caesar salad. Okay, the next few questions kind of tie in together, so I'm just gonna answer them like all at once. And it is, what do you wanna go to college for? My plans after graduating and my dream job. So as of now, I wanna go to college for kind of communications, marketing, and business. And my dream school is UCSD. And my dream job is honestly what I'm doing right now. I've always wanted to be a YouTuber. I've always wanted to kind of be in like the area of content creation, health and fitness. And if not, I would definitely still be in like the health and fitness world, but probably more on like the marketing and social media side of a brand anyways. Okay, the next question is how long have me and my boyfriend been together? And so I'm filming this on the 17th, I believe. And on the 20th, we will have been together for four months. The next question is starting to get a little bit more into like health and fitness and it is what motivates me to keep going. And honestly, okay, this kind of sounds cheesy, but recently it's been you guys and I think it's just because, I mean, I filmed videos, like I was in a rut a while ago, just because it's really hard being a teenager and like having this way of living and then like going out with your friends that maybe don't have the same lifestyle or just like seeing other people like that and I know it can be hard and you like compare yourself, but for me, I get so much motivation from you guys. I feel like we've created such a community. All of the messages that I get just really inspires me and motivates me to keep going. But before I started my YouTube channel, and honestly where I still get so much of my motivation is because I know that I feel my best when I'm doing what I do. And that's just like eating healthy, prioritizing whole foods, getting enough protein, working out, waking up early. Like those are all things that like really give to my energy, they give to my mood. I notice that I'm just a more enjoyable person. I have better days when I do those habits. So that's where I get my motivation. My other biggest tip for this is romanticize your life. And I know this was like a big TikTok trend if you're on TikTok, but seriously, it's life-changing. Like, for example, if you have a bunch of homework to do, don't be like, ugh, I have to do my homework and like kind of speed through it. No, no, no. Light a candle, go to a coffee shop, put on some music, like depending where you are, you know, adapt to your surroundings. But like, you're the main character of your life. And I'm sorry if that's like cringy, but it's true. And once you like realize this and like, take a hold of it, everything that you do instantly becomes more fun. Like waking up early, put on music, drink a Celsius, go to the gym, put on a cute workout outfit. If you're trying to find motivation to start walking daily, make it a hot girl walk, put on a cute matching set, listen to a podcast. Like 
when you start romanticizing everything that you do, everything becomes easier and everything becomes so much more fun. And then my last little thing kind of ties hand in hand with social media. And if you're here watching this video, you kind of already do it. And that is following people that inspire you and then like creating Pinterest boards, kind of cultivating your TikTok feed to be like motivational, inspirational, all that stuff. Because I think that social media is such an amazing platform if it's used the right way. If you're following accounts that make you feel negative about yourself, then social media can be very toxic. But if you use social media to your advantage and you cultivate your feed to be really inspiring, then I think that social media can be really beneficial to everyone. So if you use social media to your advantage, it can be extremely motivational and beneficial. So those are my biggest tips for like motivation and discipline. Okay, I really like the next question actually. It's when you started your journey, how did your family react for the groceries, the house, the gym, all of that? So I'm really lucky. My family was super, super supportive. They've been on my side for this whole journey and they're still on my side even with this YouTube channel. Um, when I first told them like I wanted to lose weight and get into fitness and kind of change my life, I've grown up in a very healthy household. So like my mom has always cooked whole meals and made sure we get protein, fats, carbs. Like my family's never really been into like junk food or anything. So making healthy meals wasn't really a stretch for my mom, but she really helped me with like nutrition. She taught me like how to cook basic healthy meals. She always made sure that I had my healthy groceries. Um, she helped me build a home gym because when I got into fitness, it was during quarantine. So like we couldn't go to the gym. So she helped me make an at home gym. So my family has been super, super supportive, which is why I'm really lucky. And I know that not everyone has that. So I'm extremely appreciative of them. Okay. <laughs> I think the next question is kind of funny. It's, do you ever get bloated? You look so perfect and fit. Um, the reason I said that I think this is kind of funny is because I, like I said, I'm actually lactose intolerant and I do struggle a lot with like stomach issues and I'm not really sure why. I've like tried cutting things out, but I just find like saying, oh, I'm not gonna eat dairy. Oh, I'm not gonna eat gluten. Like really doesn't work for me just cause I like to have a flexible diet. So I avoid dairy when possible, but like I said, ice cream is my favorite food. Like what am I supposed to do? But I do bloat a lot. I'm literally bloated right now as I'm filming it. Obviously you can't tell because I'm just like talking to a camera. But yes, I get bloated and it's very painful and it's normal. We all get bloated. And I just think that it doesn't get like talked about enough on social media or shown just cause like social media is a highlight reel. But yes, I do get bloated and it's very uncomfortable. Okay, so the next question, these two kind of tie together but it's what's the most important lessons you've learned from your past and then the most useful thing you've learned on your fitness journey. And honestly, the most important lessons have come from my fitness journey, so I'll just answer them together. There's kind of a few, so I'm just gonna list them out. But for sure, the first thing that like pops in my mind is really learning how to be myself and like knowing my priorities because I think that the way that I've come about my fitness journey and the way that it's completely affected my lifestyle and taken like a whole 360 on how I choose to live life, um, especially at my age, is very different than how a lot of people my age live. And it's really taught me to be very confident in my choices because like I said, not everyone wakes up at 5 a.m. to work out at my age. Not everyone eats the way that I do. Like, not everyone wants to go to sleep at 9.30 and read instead of going out. And I've really learned that if I know what works for me and I know it makes me feel the best, that's what matters and that's what I should do and not listen to everyone else. And I'm going to talk about this a little bit later because another question ties into my struggles with this because I'm not saying that it's been perfect, but that's definitely one of the most useful things that I've learned. I've also learned that you have control over your life and... I think that's something that the earlier you realize, the better it is. Because once you learn that you have full control over your life, and I don't mean like the obvious and controllables, like you can't control outside aspects, but once you learn that you control yourself, it's insane what you can do. Because once you realize like you have the power to change your body, you have the power to change your habits, you have the power to change your lifestyle, your job, all of these things, once you realize that it's in your control, you can like fully alter your life. and. My fitness journey has given me like a whole new aspect on just life in general because I've realized that if I want something and I'm willing to work for it, I can get it. 
And honestly, like that's kind of why I started a YouTube channel because I saw what I could do with my fitness journey and I knew that a YouTube channel is something I've always wanted to start. It's something I've been so passionate about and I was like, okay, if I can have this effect on my life, like if I want a YouTube channel, I can make it and I can make it work. And I think that that's what I've done so far. And so definitely like learning that you have control over your life is one of the biggest things that I've learned. So the last personal question that I have is how do you do so much so young without your parents worrying that you will get burnt out? And honestly, they do get worried. So for those of you who don't know, I'm a junior a student athlete. I had a job. I recently just quit it. And then I also do YouTube and then I also work out. And typically I wake up at like 5 a.m. So that's a lot for someone's plate. And then of course I have like AP classes, homework, like it's a lot. And I won't lie, it gets to me sometimes and I do get very stressed out. And like I said, my family is extremely supportive, but they also do get worried about me sometimes. And I've had a lot of talks with my mom and they like check in on me and they make sure that I'm doing okay and that I'm not overwhelmed. And honestly, it's just about communication. So they definitely do worry about me sometimes, but I'm really open with them. I tell them how I'm feeling. I tell them if I'm feeling stressed and then they help me in the best way that they can. Yeah, so <laughs> they definitely do worry about me getting burnt out, but in general, I'm really good with my time and I communicate with them how I feel and we work things out and they understand that I have my goals and I'm gonna prioritize them. The next questions are a little bit more like about fitness. How often and how long do you run and do I use any pre-workout? So if I do use pre-workout, it's either gonna be a cup of coffee or a Celsius. I don't typically use like um, energy drinks with creatine or anything. Like I've tried bangs, but so far Celsius's have just been my favorite. And then every day I run one mile just cause, um, just cause I love running and like having good cardiovascular health is just something that's really important to me. So I don't necessarily run to like stay lean or anything. It's just something that I enjoy doing. And then like I mentioned before in my split, I've like posted a few videos about it. In my split, I have a like dedicated cardio day. And on that day I'll run at least three miles. The most I've ever run is 10 miles, but recently it's like three to five. Where did you find motivation to start working out and what was the click? So I started working out to lose weight. Um, I was not confident in my body. I was not confident in myself. I had really low self-esteem. I've always been athletic in the sense that I've done sports, but like I was by no means athletic in like, oh, I can run a fast mile. Like I remember always being one of the last people to finish the mile in middle school when we would run. So I was just really tired of that and I wanted to lose weight and like feel confident and comfortable in my body. So that's where I got the main motivation and I don't remember like the day that it clicked, but I just remember saying like, all right, like I wanna make a change. I'm gonna lose weight and I'm gonna be confident in my body. And I would say that I achieved that and I'm very proud of myself for it. How do you create your workout plan? So I don't know if this is like how I do it or how you should do it. And I honestly can't tell you, you should find what works best for you. But the way that I do it is I decided how many days I wanted to work out and slowly it's increased. So when I started my fitness journey, I worked out like every other day. So I was doing three to four times a week. Whereas now I work out five to six times a week, depending how I feel. But I lift every day, except for the my only cardio day. And then I know that I like to run every single day. So I incorporate that. And then I also really like HIIT workouts. So typically I'll do a HIIT workout every day. And then that leaves about 20 to 30 minutes to lift. Because I work out five days a week, one of them being cardio, that leaves me four days. I hit legs twice a day and I hit upper body twice a day. And the way that I personally like to split it up is between push and pull so that like each separate muscle gets targeted in a different day so they have more recovery time. And then in terms of legs, I just separate it into a heavier day and then a lighter day with more cardio. So that's the way I do it. Let me recap for you guys my split in case you didn't watch my previous fitness video. So Monday is legs, but it's more of like hit cardio day. Tuesday, I do a pull day, which is back and biceps. And then of course I'm running between like every day. Wednesday is a rest day. Thursday is legs again, but it's heavier. Friday is my push day, which is chest, shoulders, and triceps. I typically rest on Saturday and then Sundays are my long run day. So that's just how I do it. And then again, I'm intuitive. So like if I'm really sore one day, maybe I lift lighter or I'll do Pilates. But in general, that's the split that I stick to. Okay. How did you start waking up early? So this is a really good question because I have not always been an early bird and I always get so many questions asking like, how do you wake up at like 4.30 or five every single day? 
and honestly I fell in love with waking up early and I realized like it's crazy how much time it gives you in the morning so it started out in quarantine I started waking up around 6 a.m. every day and then when I went to school, my school started at seven, but I knew that I wanted to work out before school still. So then I was like, okay, let me wake up at five. And then I realized that I needed more time in the mornings before going to the gym. So I started waking up at 4.30. So it was definitely a process. It wasn't like I went from sleeping until nine to like waking up at 4.30. It's not that easy. But really, I also just like found reasons to look forward to waking up. So I'm definitely gonna make a morning routine video like when I do go to the gym, but like a kind of brief overview, I'll like wake up and then I'll light a candle, I'll do my five minutes of yoga and then I'll get ready, I'll pack my gym bag and then I'll head to the gym. And typically that's when I'll take my Celsius and I'll like blast music on the way there. And like those little habits just like, they literally are my reason for waking up. And then like when I finish my workout, I get to watch the sunrise. And I just get so much energy from watching the sunrise. Like, it's just genuinely the best way for me to start the day because I just feel like I'm watching the new day rise, if that makes sense. And I love the feeling of, like, being awake before everyone else. So that's how I started waking up early, and that's kind of how I've cultivated the habit. So hopefully that helps you guys because, seriously, if you just start waking up one hour earlier before you usually do, your life will be changed, I promise. So the next question is, what's more important to see results, food or exercise? So this question's a little bit controversial and everyone's gonna have their own spin on it. And honestly, they're both like hand in hand. The best way to see the max amount of results is to focus on your food and to focus on your exercise. But I'm gonna have to say the most important thing is nutrition. I mean, we've all heard the saying, abs are made in the kitchen. You have to eat to fuel your body and you have to eat to fuel the results that you want to see so if your goal is to gain muscle you're not going to be able to gain muscle unless you're eating enough protein and maybe in a calorie surplus depending how much muscle you want to gain and if you want to get shredded you have to be again eating enough protein but in a calorie deficit and if you want to maintain or focus on body recomp your nutrition has to be on point all of these goals are fully valid and they're all very important and yes the different types of exercises that you do kind of affect how your results will happen but at the end of the day it all comes down to nutrition i've heard like it's about 80 percent nutrition 20 percent exercise i don't know if those numbers are like fully accurate but i would definitely say that i've noticed the most amount of results when i'm really focusing on my nutrition and and fueling my body for my goals so the next question is how long did it take me to start seeing results after I changed my lifestyle? If you haven't already, I definitely recommend watching my fitness journey video. I have that posted a little bit down my feed because in there I go really in depth. So I'm going to answer this one quickly, but I would say around three months in to my like fitness journey, I started seeing results. They weren't like the biggest results, but I definitely could see myself losing weight. I could see myself getting more toned and building muscle and seeing the results I wanted. And then I would say, Within eight months, I lost the most amount of weight. So hopefully that answers your question. If you want a more like in-depth video, definitely go check out my fitness video, but that's as much I'm gonna answer in this one just cause I wanna like keep it moving. What do I do on my active rest days? So on my active rest days, depending how I feel, sometimes I let myself just completely rest, have a lazy day, I'll just do homework, run errands. Maybe I don't do any exercise and that's okay. But ideally I'll try to get in 10,000 steps. I don't always hit it. I'm going to be honest. I try to prioritize walking and then I like to do yoga in the mornings. And then also depending on my rest day, if it's like a Wednesday or a Saturday, sometimes I have diving practice. So that's also exercise. The last fitness question is a typical day of exercise and eating like my average steps, meals, and snacks. Like I mentioned, I try to get in 10,000 steps a day. It's a little bit hard with school just cause I go like straight from school to practice and then I have homework. So I haven't been on top of my steps recently, but ideally I'll hit my 10,000 steps. And then I wake up at 5 a.m. every day and I'll do about an hour of working out. Sometimes it's an hour and a half. It depends how much time I have. And that consists of hit, weights, and running. And then as far as food goes, I have a whole meal video of my staple recipes. So definitely watch that but I love my protein French toast. I also really like these protein pop tarts, which were in my grocery haul in my last video, or like protein bars, um, egg whites, salads, just like things where I can fit as much protein in as possible and still taste good. I also have been obsessed with protein ice cream recently. 
So the kind of third section of this Q&A is just more like advice focused things. So the first one is what are my best tips for consistency? And honestly, I feel like this is kind of tough love, but I feel like everyone needs to hear it. And at the end of the day, if you want to be consistent, you just have to do it. And everyone always talks about motivation. And yes, motivation is important, but at the end of the day, it comes down to discipline because consistency is key. Like there's a reason that that's a quote that's literally everywhere. If you're not being consistent, you're not gonna see your results because just like one salad won't get you abs, one ice cream won't make you fat. Like you have to be consistent in your workouts. You have to be consistent in your habits. Otherwise, they're not gonna be habits. So discipline is the most important thing. If you tell yourself you're gonna do something, you have to do it. But then also you have to set like reasonable goals and then slowly alter them as you progress through your journey. Like you can't just go from an only diet of McDonald's to like only eating salads. Like it just doesn't work like that. That would be so hard. You would probably fail, feel disappointed, wanna give up. Like you just can't do that. So the best ways to be consistent are to one, be disciplined with yourself, but two, also realize what you can and can't do and then make goals that are doable. So this one is a little bit more personal again, but also it's just like for all teenagers about balancing romantic life, studies, social life, and fitness. So I already talked about it before, but for me, studies comes first. So I always make sure I do my homework the second that it's assigned. I never procrastinate. I have an off period, which means I get out of school early. So I go straight to the library. I'll do all of my homework. So I make sure that I never have like overdue assignments and it's like not clouding the back of my head. And then I work out in the morning. So I never have to think about my workouts during the day. So that's just already done, which is why I really recommend trying to wake up early because if you get your workout out of the way before school, like it doesn't even feel like it's part of your day. And then as far as social life and romantic life, I have practiced like right after school till about 6.30 or seven. And then I go to sleep at 10. So that's about like three hours. And in that three hours, I'll figure out if I wanna hang out with my boyfriend or my friends or go to a football game. I just kind of work my schedule around that. And then of course on the weekends, I have more time and I just really make sure that I plan my time, prioritize my school and somehow it works. <laughs> So the next question is how to be more confident. And this is something that I'm really passionate about because personally my confidence level has really spiked since like going through my fitness journey. But honestly, I don't really wanna call it a fitness journey anymore because I feel like it's more than just fitness. I feel like my whole personality and like view on life changed as I went through my fitness journey. The biggest confidence change for me occurred when I became confident in who I am as a person. And the best way that I can put that to like make sense is like I built a trust with myself through fitness, for me at least, that I became more of a confident person because I was confident in myself. And the best way I can explain this is like, if you tell yourself, okay, I'm gonna wake up at 5 a.m. and then you wake up at 5 a.m., you're slowly building this self-trust, self-confidence in yourself that's gonna build up your confidence on the outside as well. The next tip I have, I mean, I always say this, look good, feel good. Dress in clothes that you feel comfortable in and confident in. You should never feel pressured to dress a certain way because like, this is a trend or this is what my friends are wearing. That's not what I'm saying. Like if you're wearing something that you don't like how you look in, like you're not gonna be confident. So get yourself a new wardrobe, use it as an excuse to go shopping, buy yourself clothes that really make you feel like yourself and instantly your confidence is gonna be up. And the last thing that I have to say about being more confident is you have to realize like you have one life, you have one you and why would you choose to live your life trying to please others or not feel comfortable being yourself? At the end of the day, you only get one life and you have to choose to be yourself in that moment and the best way to live is to be confident and fake it till you make it if you have to. And then the last question that I have is how do you stay so disciplined slash how to be disciplined? And honestly, I kind of talked about this when I was talking about consistency. The only way to be disciplined is to be disciplined, but you don't just like wake up one day and you're just like, I'm 100% disciplined. It's built over time. And honestly, it's something that I struggled with too. It's not something easy, it's built over time. But the biggest tips that I have is starting small and then building your way up. So you have to start with a goal that you know is achievable for yourself and then you have to make sure you do it. So if you wanna wake up at 6 a.m. every day that morning, you have to commit to waking up at 6 a.m. 
every day that week. If you think that's too much, maybe start with something smaller. But once you like pick a goal, you have to just decide to do it. Otherwise, if you like want to be disciplined and then you can't be disciplined, it just like all is going to crumble apart. And then the other tip that I have is it depends like what type of discipline you're referring to, but you have to see like your overarching goal and then decide that that goal is more important than anything smaller that would fall under it. And then for me personally, once I kind of fine tune my goals and I know it feels best for me, I honestly don't even see it as discipline anymore. It's just more of what I enjoy doing, like going to the gym. I know I feel my best when I work out. So it's no longer a matter of discipline. It's just like doing what I love. But in the beginning, I saw my goal and I wanted it so much that I was like, okay, no, I don't feel like waking up so early, but I know that I want to reach my goal and this is what's going to get me there. And so I'm going to do it. And when you hold yourself to that level of commitment, the discipline just comes. And honestly, there's no life hack. There's no easy way to be disciplined. You just have to fully commit to your goal and then do it. So then this question is a little bit more personal and it's also the last question. And it is, have I ever struggled with food of any sort and like my relationship with food, just that kind of stuff. And honestly, yes, I have, but I feel like it's not in the terms that most people would think. Um, I would say that I struggle the most with food in like social events because I've talked about it before. I do have physical goals, like physique wise. And like, yes, I work out because it makes me feel my best. And I eat the way that I do because it makes me feel my best. But at the end of the day, like I do have physical goals. And when I'm put in like public situations with people my age, or honestly just like family friends too, just like anyone that doesn't really have the same goals as I do, I start to like compare myself to them and it makes me feel like I'm not normal for like having the goals that I do, especially at my age. So then I kind of feel like peer pressure, whether it's intentional or not, to start like eating more unhealthy. And like the best way I can think of this is like, if you're at a party and they order pizza and like, personally, I don't even like pizza. It doesn't make me feel good. It usually makes my stomach hurt. I find myself extremely bloated after eating it. It doesn't align with my goals. Like there's no reason for me to eat it. But when I'm put in like social settings like that, I tend to feel pressure when everyone else starts eating it. Like I'm missing out from something and then I end up eating it. And then later I'll feel like heavy and slow and like, my skin will break out and I'll feel really bloated and gross and I'll be like why did I do that so I would say that's where I kind of struggle with food it's just like in social settings because if I'm home and I have like full control over the food that I want to eat like I will choose the high protein foods the healthier options the food that's really going to fuel for my goals and like make me feel my best but then when I'm put in like social settings I start to compare myself to what's considered normal or people like make comments on like oh why aren't you eating pizza why aren't you eating this do you not eat dairy like these things and I'll like feel like it's not normal and then I get pressured and I'm not at all saying like other people pressure me into it it's like I almost pressure myself into eating like the foods that don't make me feel my best so that's just where I would say that like I struggle with my relationship with food, not in like a negative sense, just like feeling pressured from other people that don't live the same way I do to eat in a different way. So that was my Q&A. I hope that that was helpful. I hope that you guys got a sense and got to know me a little bit better. And then I also hope that this answered your questions as best as possible. So please like and subscribe because it helps support me so, so, so much. And the growth on this channel has been insane. All of your messages mean so much to me. And you guys have no idea like how much you guys motivate me as well. And I love you all. Thank you for clicking on today's video and I'll see you in the next one.